This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. There might be a few thousand people in the United States who are not aware that the economy is pretty screwed up at the moment. We've got farmers destroying their own produce. We've got the price of oil bottoming out. We have got companies entering bankruptcy proceedings. We have got over 20 million unemployed Americans. We've got the president closing the border to immigration. We've also got a lot of people protesting about stay-at-home orders and how much damage those orders are doing to the economy. At the same time that we have state governors listing businesses as non-essential activities. Of course, there are also cops doing a good job of telling people that whatever they want to do is an unessential activity, including protesting the prolonged economic shutdown and what it is doing to folks financially. We are past the breaking point between sitting at home and waiting the crisis out in safety and taking a risk of infection to make sure that the bank doesn't foreclose on the mortgage. States have begun to announce their start dates for Phase 1 reopening, so naturally the internet is burning up with hot takes. Since that's the case, I think that I will light a match myself and get some opinions on to roast. The states, U.S. territories, and federal district comprise 56 separate jurisdictions within the U.S. Of those 56, seven issued no stay-at-home order at all, and four issued partial stay-at-home orders. The other 45 issued some form of a full stay-at-home order. The first to expire was Alaska, which ended its stay-at-home order on April 21st. Montana's will end on April 24th. Colorado, April 26th. Mississippi and South Carolina, April 27th. North Carolina, April 29th. Most of the rest of the stay-at-home orders will end on April 30th, with only 18 jurisdictions scheduled to maintain their stay-at-home orders into May, and only Virginia scheduled a stay-at-home order to last until June, although theirs can be rescinded. States and territories are planning to start reopening their economy for business in accordance with the federally recommended phased approach, with some beginning Phase 1 as early as April 30th. It is important to maintain COVID-19 safety protocols during the phased reopening, and every governor who has announced any plans to reopen their state so far has reminded their residents that these safety guidelines will remain in effect during this time. The federal guidelines are, in short, to reopen the state in phases that last two weeks. Phase 1 restrictions are not much better than shelter-at-home restrictions, but businesses can reopen so long as they maintain social distancing requirements and keep groups inside their businesses to 10 or less. Phase 2 allows groups of 50 or less so long as social distancing is still maintained. Phase 3 allows vulnerable populations to end self-isolation so long as they practice social distancing and other self-protecting protocols, and for businesses to resume near-normal operations. Note that no Phase 4 is mentioned when we all go back to normal interactions. That's because no protocol for returning to life before COVID-19 has been published yet. Nor will the White House publish such a protocol until a vaccine is fully tested and available. Also noticeable is the fact that any resurgence in COVID-19 infections will result in the state either restarting the current phase or moving back to an earlier phase. That's the plan, folks. And to some, it cannot come soon enough. To others more concerned with the chance of infection than the chance of economic collapse, it's too soon to reopen the economy even in a phased approach. That is either because of or in spite of the growing cascade failure of the economy and the destruction of people's careers and personal finances. Now, sheltering in place and social distancing have undoubtedly prevented infections and saved lives. But let's look at Arkansas as an example of a state with no stay-at-home order. As of April 21st, Arkansas had 1,990 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 42 deaths from about 3.018 million residents. That's a per capita infection rate of 0.65 per thousand, and a death rate per infection of about 2%. The vast majority of the people have sheltered in place and practiced social distancing without a stay-at-home requirement, and there have been about 161,000 initial unemployment claims in the last month. 
Virginia, with 8.536 million residents and a highly restrictive stay-at-home order, has 9,630 cases and 324 deaths as of April 21st. That equates to a per capita infection rate of nearly 1.13 per thousand and a death rate per infection of over 3%. Virginia's initial unemployment claims for the last month were about 415,000. So one could conclude from those numbers that Arkansas, a more rural state, has a better success rate at treating the disease so far, all without a stay-at-home order. The panic reaction that lifting stay-at-home orders will result in a significant resurgence of COVID-19 cases assumes that people, in general, are completely unaware of the danger. It also assumes that people are not smart enough to maintain social distancing and other protective measures without such an order. Now, Arkansas has a dubious reputation among other states when it comes to intellectual prowess. Based on educational attainment, there is some support for that dubious reputation, as Arkansas currently ranks 42nd in the nation overall in education, with a 40th place finish in both public schools and in higher education. Virginia, by comparison, ranks 7th overall, placing 8th in the nation in public schools and 14th in the nation in higher education. One might just suppose that people from Virginia would be able to understand anything that people from Arkansas can understand, and Arkansans understand the seriousness of the situation just fine. They abide by social distancing, wash their hands, wear masks, don't touch their faces, avoid groups, and stay home if they do not have important business to do. So, why should the thought of states like Virginia lifting their stay-at-home orders in keeping with the federal guidelines cause such general consternation. The longer these stay-at-home orders are in place, the longer the national and global economy will continue its cascade failure. And the longer that cascade failure effect continues, the longer it will be before the nation recovers from COVID-19. We are still losing jobs, even though the rate of job loss has slowed from the initial COVID-19-induced surge. The current situation cannot continue forever. Each state has a vested interest in the resumption of its own furloughed businesses, but each state also has a vested interest in the resumption of business in other states, too. Major businesses in America often do their business nationwide. If California remains closed for business, then the rest of the country loses access to the California markets. The rest of the country also loses the products of California, too. One would think that California would understand this concept, since they place 21st overall in education and 4th in higher education. Come on, folks. We know how to be careful by now. We can either reopen the economy following common sense guidelines, or we can wait until the economy is completely ruined and there are not any businesses left to open. Which of those do you think is a better idea?